Section 1, Geography and Early Japan. Geography shapes life in Japan. The islands of Japan are really just the tops of undersea mountains and volcanoes sticking up out of the ocean. These mountains, as you can see on the map, cover nearly all of Japan. Only about 20% of the land is flat because it is difficult to live about live um live uh, and farm on mountain slopes most japanese people have always lived in those flat land areas the coastal plains in addition to the mountains and the lack of flat land the the nearness of the sea shaped lives of japanese people their homes were never far from sea naturally they turned to the sea for sea for food they learned all prepare to prepare all kinds of seafood from eel to sharks to octopus to seaweed. As a result, seafood has been the key part of Japanese diet for thousands of years. The island's location affected the Japanese people in another way as well. Because they lived on islands, the Japanese were allowed were separated from the other people of Asia. This uh, separation allowed the Japanese to develop their own culture. For example, they created a religion and a social structure very different from those in other parts of Asia. This separation has always been an important part of Japanese society. Japan, Japan isn't totally isolated. However, look at the insert map above to find Korea and China. As you can see, neither country is very far from Japan islands. Korea is about 100 miles away, miles, miles away from Japan. China is about 400. Those short distances allowed the older Korean and Chinese, cult Chinese culture to influence the new culture of Japan. Early Japanese Society Korea and China did play a major part in the role of shaping Japanese society, but not at first. Early Japan was a home to different cultures, neither of which had any contact with the rest of Asia. The Ainu. The one culture that developed in Japan was the Ainu. Historians aren't sure exactly when or how the Ainus moved to um, Japan. Some people think... Think... They come from Russia... What if now Siberia in eastern Russia, um, what, what, wherever they came from, the Ainu spoke language unlike any other ja language in, in, in eastern Asia. They also looked different from the other people of Japan. Over time, the Ainu began to fight with other people for land. They lost most of these fights um, and so they lost their land as well. Eventually, the Ainu were driven back onto a single island, Hokkaido. Over time, the Ainu culture almost disappeared. Many people gave up the Ainu culture and adopted the new cultures. The first Japanese, the people who lived south of the Ainu, eventually became the Japanese. They lived mostly in small farming villages. There were these villagers were ruled by powerful clans or extended families. Other people in the villages, ex including farmers and workers, had to obey and respect members of these clans. At the head of each clan was a chief. In addition to his political power, each chief also had religious duties. Um, these Japanese believed that their clan chiefs were descendants descended from natural spirits, <coughs> nature spirits called kami. Um, clan chiefs led their clans in rituals and honored kami ancestors. Over time, these rituals became a central part of traditional religion Japanese, Shinto. According to Shinto, teachings everything in nature, the sun, moon, tree, waterfalls, and animals, has kami. Um, Shintoists, Shintoists believe that sun kami helped people live and keep them from harm. They built shrines to kami and performed ceremonies in which they asked the kami to bless, bless them. 
the first emperors. The clans of early Japan weren't all weren't all equal. Some clans were larger and more powerful than others. In time, a few of these powerful clans built up armies and set out to conquer the neighbors. One clan that gained power in this way lived in the Yamato Rin, the western part of Japan's large island, Honshu. In addition to military might, the Yamato rulers claimed to have glorious family history. They believed they were all descended from the most powerful of all kami, the goddess of sun. By the 500s, the Yamato rulers had extended their control over much of Honshu. Uh, although they didn't control the whole country, the leaders of the Yamato clan began to call themselves the emperor of old Japan. Japan learned from China and Korea. Early Japanese society received very little influence from cultures on the Asian mainland. Occasionally, officials from China, Korea, or other parts of Asia visited Japan. For the most part, however, these visits didn't have a great impact on the Japanese way of life. By the mid-500s, though, some Japanese leaders thought that Japan could learn a great deal from other countries, other cultures. In particular, they wanted to learn more about the cultures of China and Korea. To learn what they wanted to know, the rulers of Japan decided to send representatives to China and Korea to gather information about their cultures. They also invited people from China and Korea to move to Japan. These emperors hoped that these people could teach the Japanese, Japanese new ways of working and thinking. <coughs> Changes in language one of the first things that Japanese learned from Korea, China and Korea was language. These early Japanese didn't have any written language. Therefore, many learned to speak in Chinese. They continued to speak in Japanese, however, this, which is very different from Chinese. It was until about um, 200 years later that people devised a way of writing in Japanese. They used Chinese characters to represent the sounds used in Japanese. As Japan's contact with China and especially increased, some Japanese people especially be began to write in Chinese language. Japanese writers used Chinese for their poems and stories. One of the first stories of Japan written in the 700s is in Chinese. For many years, Chinese was even the official language of Japan's government. Changes in the religion and philosophy. One of the people most influential in bringing Chinese ideas to Japan was Prince Shotoku. He served from 593 to 621 as regent for his aunt, the Empress. A regent is a powerful person who rules a country for someone who is unable to rule alone. All his life, Shotoku admired Chinese culture. As a regent, Shotoku show, saw a chance for Japan to adopt more Chinese. <coughs> um, chance from Japanese to adopt more Chinese ideas. He sent scholars to Chinese China to learn all they could about Chinese society. The ideas these scholars brought back changed Japanese society. For example, they taught the Japanese about Confucianism. Among other though, things, Confucianism outlined all how families should behave. Confucius t taught that fathers should rule their families. He believed that wives should obey their husband. Children should obey their parents. And younger brothers should obey older brothers. Families in China lived according to these rules. As Confucian ideas spread through Japan, the Japanese began to live by them as well. Most important than the social changes through were the vast religious changes Shotoku made in Japan. He was a Buddhist. He wanted to spread Buddhism Throughout his country, Buddhism wasn't new to Japan. Korean visitors had introduced the religion to Japan about 550 years earlier, but it was not very popular. Most people preferred to keep their traditional religion, Shinto. Shotoku worked to change people's minds about Buddhism. 
he built a grand Buddhist temple that still stands today. He also wrote commentaries on Buddhist teachings. Largely because of his efforts, Buddhism became more popular, especially among ja- Japanese nobles. Shotoku had also wanted to change Japan's government to be more like China's. He especially wanted Japan's emperors to have more power, like China's emperors did. Afraid that they would lose power to the emperor, many clan leaders opposed to Shotoku's government plans. As a result, Japan's emperors gained little power.